Now, when I was 15 years old, I had a very important person in my life come to me and say, who's your hero? And I said, I don't know. I got to think about that. Give me a couple of weeks. I come back two weeks later. I said, I thought about it. You know who it is? I said, it's me in 10 years. So you see, every day, every week, every month, and every year of my life, my hero is always 10 years away. I'm never going to be my hero. I'm not going to attain that. I know I'm not. And that's just fine with me because that keeps me with somebody to keep on chasing. I just beat me. This ain't about nobody else. I just beat me. If I can keep beating myself, pause, if I can keep doing that, then that means that I'm in a battle with the only person that I really want and beat, and that's me. I don't, I don't care about anybody else. I have no worry or gripe about the next man or woman's journey. That's not what I'm, what I'm up against. If I can continue to outdo me from the day before, then I'm, then I'm ahead. Life is not fair. And that is the reality. Disease and accidents don't care if their victim is a good person. They have no reason, no justification, and no mercy. And you cannot stop. So, what do you do? Life's not easy. It is not. Don't try to make it that way. Life's not fair. It never was. It isn't now and it won't ever be. People always ask me like there's some magical response. How did you go from just coming from Liberty City, selected uh, one of the top five speakers in the world? I was willing to work. Most people aren't willing to do that because I was moving. I want you to write this out. Keep it moving. One of the things that you don't want to do is, is become comfortable with where you are when you know in your heart of hearts you can have more and you can do more and there's a life for you beyond survival. And I just felt that I could do more. Keep going because there's people that don't want to see you succeed. Keep going because you want to prove those people wrong. You want to knock the naysayers down. You want to make them your footstool. I'm telling you to keep going when you face opposition. I'm telling you to keep going when you face adversity. You don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. What knowledge that you have in this economy, part of what we need, that people are willing to pay you for that. Next is talent. What talent? My talent is talking. To me, my definition of success is doing what you love to do and find somebody to pay you to do it. So I find people to pay me to talk. I make more in one hour than 90% of the American public earn working for a whole year doing what I love to do. That I've developed my talent. You want to master your talent. Find out what it is that you love to do. I love to talk. Scripture is another key that says to us what we need to do to begin to develop ourselves. Luke 12, 34, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So what do you love to do? And then explore ways in which you can earn a living doing that. Cooking, writing, painting, working with numbers, working with people. The other thing is not only must you have knowledge, talent, some skill, but the other thing that's important, faith to act on whatever your dream is. So the faith to act on those dreams, those desires. Here's scripture that I, that I like very much. Proverbs 16, 16 chapter, third verse. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit means to carry into action deliberately. Commit means to make it happen no matter what. See, when you make a commitment, I'm going to become wealthy. When you make it important, when you decide I'm going to do it no matter what, life changes for you. See, most people don't keep their commitments to their commitments. That's why they lead lives of poverty, lives of misery, lives of unhappiness. There's nothing that comes out of quitting besides knowing that you didn't finish. We finish everything. You start it, finish it. When I pick it up and say I'm going to start it, I got to finish it. It all don't work. 
It all ain't the best. It all ain't knocked out the park. But I walk away saying I finished it. I did it. What's at the core of achieving the good life? The major key to the good life. The major key is not in learning how to set goals. It is not in learning how to better manage your time. It is not in mastering the attributes of leadership. Every day in a thousand different ways, we are trying to improve ourselves by learning how to do things. We spend a lifetime gathering knowledge in classrooms, in textbooks, in experiences. Now, if knowledge is power, if knowledge is the forerunner to success, then why do we fall short of our objectives? Why, in spite of all our knowledge and in spite of our collective experiences, do we find ourselves aimlessly wandering? Settling for a life of existence rather than a life of substance. While there may be many answers to this question, the fundamental answer is the absence of discipline. Applying all that we know. That's the key word, discipline, self-discipline. We might add one more word here, consistent. Consistent self-discipline. Better than knowledge is applied knowledge. And once we've applied our knowledge, we must study the results of that process. Apply our knowledge, study the results. Refine our approach. Finally, by trying and observing and refining and trying again, our knowledge will inevitably produce worthy results, admirable results. And with the joy and results of our efforts, we continue to apply, to learn, to observe, to fuel our ambition with the positive reinforcement of continued progress. Pretty soon, we'll find that we're swept into a spiral of achievement, a vertical rise to success. But for this whole process to work for us, we must first master the art of discipline, self-discipline, consistent self-discipline. How often do we procrastinate? How often do we say stuff like, yeah, I really should do that. I don't know. I guess I'm just lazy. We have a problem with too many choices, too many options, and not following through on any of them. Socrates said the uncommitted life isn't worth living. So part of what you must do, whatever commitment, whatever covenant you make with God while you're here, to go back and be a better father, to go back to make a difference in the community, to go back to change your life, to decide not to ever to use drugs or alcohol again, to decide to that you're going to begin to recreate yourself, that you're going to be reborn to a new state of consciousness. Whatever commitment that you make, keep your commitment to your commitment. No matter what, if it's hard, then do it hard. But keep your commitment to your commitment. First step is you got to live your calling. You got to decide what is it you love. Second thing is you got to work on yourself. Write this down under work on yourself. You don't get in life what you want. You get in life what you are. You have a job. You're generating $1,200 a year or $2,000 or $500,000. Whatever you earn, whatever you're producing in your life, is a reflection of you. I can look at what you're producing and I can tell you a lot about who you are. See, when you leave here, you've got to make a commitment to be more fruitful, to be more productive, to make greater impact. So what will allow you to do that? you got to spend time working on yourself. It takes consistent self-discipline to master the art of setting goals to master the art of time management, to master the art of leadership, to master the art of parenting and relationships. If we don't make consistent self-discipline part of our daily lives, the results we seek will be sporadic and elusive. It takes a consistent effort to truly manage our valuable time or we'll be consistently frustrated. It takes discipline to conquer the nagging voices in our minds the fear of failure, the fear of success, the fear of poverty, the fear of a broken heart. It takes discipline to keep trying when that nagging voice within us brings up the possibility of failure. It takes discipline to admit our errors and recognize our limitations. The voice of the human ego speaks to all of us. 
Sometimes the voice of ego says that we should magnify our value beyond our results. It leads us to exaggerate, to not be totally honest. It takes discipline to be totally honest, both with ourselves and with others. Be certain of one thing. Every exaggeration of the truth, once detected by others, destroys our credibility and makes all that we say and do suspect. As soon as a business colleague figures out that we tend to exaggerate, guess what? They'll always think we exaggerate. And they'll never quite hold us in the same regard again. Never. It takes discipline to change a habit. Because habits are formed a little bit each day, every day, every day. Once habits are formed, they act like a giant cable. They act like a nearly unbreakable instinct that only long-term disciplined activity can change. We must unweave every strand of the cable of habits slowly and methodically until the cable that once held us in bondage becomes nothing more than scattered strands of wire. It takes the consistent application of a new discipline, a more desirable one to overcome one which is less desirable. It takes discipline to plan. It takes discipline to execute our plan. It takes discipline to look with full objectivity at the results of our applied plan. And it takes discipline to change either our plan or our method of executing that plan if the results are poor. It takes discipline to be firm when the world throws opinions at our feet. It takes discipline to ponder the value of someone else's opinion when our pride and our arrogance leads us to believe that we are the only ones with the answers. Now, if discipline is the key word and if discipline is the key action, then what exactly is discipline? One good answer might be that discipline is a constant human awareness of the need for action and a conscious act by us to implement that action. If our awareness and our implementations occur at the same time, then we begin a valued sequence of disciplined activity. Now here's the other side of discipline. If there's considerable time that passes between the moment of awareness and the time of our implementation, then that is called procrastination. Doing it tomorrow instead of today. Procrastination, an almost exact opposite of discipline. The voice within us says, get it done. Discipline then says, do it now. Do it to the best of your ability, today, tomorrow, and always, until finally, the worthy deed becomes instinctive. Procrastination says, later, tomorrow, whenever I get a chance. In every circumstance we face, we are constantly presented with these two choices. Do it now or do it later, discipline and procrastination. A choice between a disciplined existence bearing the fruit of achievement and contentment or procrastination, the easy life for which the future will bear no fruit, only the bare branches of mediocrity. You have to make that decision for yourself. You have to decide, I'm, I'm going to pursue that path which is going to be really, really hard and difficult and take many, many years and be a great sacrifice, or am I going to pursue being a great employee? Now, if you want to be a great employee, you've got to remember something. You're hired to help someone else achieve their goals, which is cool. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you don't understand that, you are not going to be a good employee. So you have a boss and they say, here's our goal for the quarter. You're going to help me get there. You work like hell to make sure that they achieve that goal. You're part of that team. That's very important and then you keep moving up the ladder. And the great thing about that is if you're a good employee, you can also do very well. It's not the same as being an entrepreneur. You're never going to probably make as much money as you could have had you started the company, is my point, but you'll get the Saturdays off, the Sundays hang out, go to the soccer games with the kids, have a more balanced life. There is no balance in entrepreneurship. You've got to die as you are now. You've got to be willing to give up who you are now for what you can become. Certain things will no longer fit into your life.
There's no place for it. In order to do something you've never done, you've got to be someone you've never been. So you've got to spend serious time reading, writing your goals down, reading scripture, anchoring yourself spiritually to handle the storms of life because they're going to come. So every day you have to sell yourself and get out of your mind those old thoughts, that old belief system. Every day you've got to sell yourself on that it's possible. That you got to put a new mind in you. You got to get out of your mind. You got to begin to restructure your thinking. Every day you got to begin to recondition your mind. See, let me share something with you. The easiest thing I've ever done was to earn a million dollars. The most difficult thing I've ever done was to believe it could happen to me. That was the most difficult part, to believe. Given the fact that I was born in an abandoned building on a floor, being labeled educable, mentally retarded, not having any college training. I used to feel all my life that people who had college degrees were more intelligent than me. I remember going to see the late Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, the author of the book, the power of positive thinking. And I used to look at him up on stage and I said, I could do that. I would love to talk to people. I love to talk to people. And I said, I could do that. But then when I started going back to my car, my mental conditioning activated itself. And it said, Les Brown, you can't do that. You don't have a college education. Les Brown, you can't do that. You don't have the training. You've never worked for a major corporation. You can't do that. What makes you think you can earn? five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in an hour. You don't earn that now working for two or three months. What makes you think that you can speak for AT&T, Procter & Gamble, McDonald's Corporation, General Electric? These are clients I have now. You've never even worked for them. How many have ever thought about something you wanted to do and you talk yourself out of it? Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. That inner conversation is what's going to haunt you after staying here and saying, I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. After saying that again and again, we are more than conquerors. That inner conversation will cost you when you leave here to go back leading a life of mediocrity, leading a life of unproductivity, leading a life of poverty. See, we live in a world where we believe that bad things are supposed to happen to us. I remember at a point of my life, Bishop, when things are going good for me, and I said, this is too good to be true. Something is bound to happen. Guess what? It did. Watch your words. Watch what you say about yourself, about your affairs. Be conscious of that on a daily basis. Why? Because your words are powerful. In the beginning was the word. Life and death is in the tongue. Watch what you You became healthy when you important and when you decided I am going to do it no matter what life change for you. See most people don't keep their commitments and their commitment that's why they lead live or property live mystery life of unhappiness. There are nothing that come out of quickly beside knowing that did not we finish everything we started finish i picked it up say gonna start finish to all work it all best it all knocked it saying i finished it i did it here i crawl off achieved it. the good life major key no luggage for us to success then why do you fail short of our object? Why in a separate to all our no luggage inside the sports of our creativity expert? Do we found ourselves animally see wandering, settering for a life of expense rather than a life of sums? While they may be answer to this question, the foundational answer is answer of this plan applying all that we know that's we key word discipline <coughs> self-discipline add me more word 
वी आर कन्सेंटमेंट सेल्फ कन्सेंटमेंट बेटर द नो लागेज इज एपिलेड नो लागेज एंड वंस वी आर एपिलेड आवर नो लागेज वी मस्ट स्टाडी द रिजल्ट ऑफ द प्रोसेस एप्लाई हाउ नो लागेज स्टाडी द रिजल्ट रिफाइन आवर एप्रोच फाइनली बाई ट्राइंग एंड ऑब्जर्व एंड द रिफाइंडिंग एंड ट्राइंग टू अगेन आवर नो लागेज विल इनबिलिटी प्रोडक्ट ओर्थ रिजल्ट एडमिटेड रिजल्ट एंड इट्स द जय अफ रिजल्ट अफ आवर एफोर्ट थैंक यू फर वाचिंग लाइक शेयर एंड सबसक्राइब